All right, here we go. You guys still there? Uh, Todd Glassy was frozen for a second. <laughs> All right. All right, so we'll go around. We'll do some introductions. Everyone can introduce themselves. And I guess the country, the Caribbean country that you're representing today. So, uh, Gussie, you can start it off. We'll go around. Great. Uh, well, I'm Gussie J. I'm from Canada. Uh, my background is St. Lucian and Dominican. Uh, I've been cosplaying for, like, I guess five, five, eight years? No, five years. Five years. Let's go five. That's about it. <laughs> Who's up? SJ? Well, hi. Um, I'm SJ. I'm from the Bahamas. Uh, I have been cosplaying since 2018, and I kind of jump-started the cosplay community here. So there's that. Oh, you did? Oh, that's nice. Yes. BBI? Hi, everyone. My name is BBI Mermaid um, from the British Virgin Islands. I've been cosplaying since 2016, but I really kick-started during the pandemic, so 2020, really. Okay, and Jazz? I'm Cliff Jasmine, I represent Jamaica, Montego Bay, and I've been cosplaying since 2012. Your mic's a little bit low, uh, Jazz. My mic's a little low. Yeah. You guys yeah, we heard, yeah, yeah, we heard you. Yeah, we're just a little bit low before. Uh, and I guess I've been cosplaying since what 2018, 1718. Um, and I'm representing Guyana. I know I'm not technically not a Caribbean country, but I'm here. From your family. Yeah, all right. It's all love. It's all love. You can't, you can't deny the roots. Oh, I, got my, I got my notes up in here. Let me check my notes. Came prepared. Okay, what was your first cosplay? And why did you choose that character? Does he? <laughs> um, my first cosplay was uh, Superman. Um, I chose it because it was really simple to do. I found a morph suit at a, at a theater store, and my cousin, my, my little cousin, I had to take him out to uh, trick or treating, and I made that like just there on the spot. I put a cape on my back, and that was it. And I ran around. My cousin. Oh, wow. <laughs> Superman, always Superman. It always that was the first one, nice. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Uh, so for me, it was Misty from Pokemon. Um, what's funny is I never really planned to do it, but uh, I was in contact with another um, cosplayer who has some Caribbean roots named uh, Sassy Black Feline. She comes from Jamaica. And she was like, hey, you would make a perfect Misty, and it's pretty easy to start out with. So, yeah, found everything I needed on Amazon. Very, very simple to do. Hmm. BVI? My first cosplay was Scorpion from Mortal Kombat. So, um, yeah, that's a hard one to start off with. I. I was an undergrad at University of Virgin Islands, and um, I won't say that everybody really knew about cosplaying, so it really was like my Halloween outfit, because everybody always had dressed up as in, you know, like the sexy cheerleader, the sexy policeman, but I wanted to be different, so I did Scorpion first and scared the shit out of everybody on the boat, which was completely hilarious, but this still was like, I love your, your outfit, your costume, so... Yeah, and I love Mortal Kombat, so and I love Scorpion. Scorpion is like my two go character whenever I'm playing. <laughs> Side yeah. note, let me just say I've been the sexy police officer for like five years running. So oh. <laughs> my boots, there everything be different. That's it's all good. Yeah, uh, Jazz. Um my first cosplay was Chun Lee. Actually, it was Halloween too, and I was like, again, tired of the kitten cosplay, the bunny uh, cosplay you see every year on Halloween. So I was like, I'm gonna be chubby, and I wore it to a dance hall <laughs> party. Nice. Was I uh, sorry, just letting you know, I'm like, I have to mute you here and there. There's some kind of like audio. I don't know if you guys are hearing it as well. Yeah, I hear it. Yeah, it's coming from coming from you, Jazz. Me? Yeah. So I don't know if you want to unplug your headphones and then plug it back in, maybe. I don't have headphones in. That's the crazy thing. And this phone is like two weeks old. Oh shoot, maybe that's why. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, that's why I say it's making like some kind of like clicking kind of noise. Like you're tapping on the keyboard or something. Yeah, I thought I thought Gussie was typing for a second there. I've never typed. I'll oh, blame you. <laughs> I ain't rude. Like, Come on, man. I you were typing something. <laughs> Is this better? Yes. Yeah. 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 All right. I have headphones. Okay. My second question would be: What made you guys want to become cosplayers? Like, what got you into cosplay? Oh, it's gonna start with me again, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know how the layout is on your screen. It goes you, SJ, me, yeah, yeah. and then Jazz. Okay, so right, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll feel this one first. I, I gotta say, um, what got me into uh, cosplay was the movie Black Panther. Uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, Sorry, I'm not laughing at you. Uh, yeah, like I, I, when I when I saw uh, Winston Duke at the time, I was in better shape. Not that I am now, and I had hair, uh, so he, me, and him look similar. And I was just like, first time I've ever seen a black person that uh, actually looks like me or has the same weight as me, you know, like he was super fit, he was just big, right? And I went and I made the costume that I saw online based on one picture, and I went to like Comic Con Toronto, uh, I think that's in March. And I went out there and everybody just was like amazed by my costume. And then from there I was hooked. That was it. That's it. Uh, in a really weird way, I have a somewhat similar story. Uh, I always wanted to cosplay, but there was never a community down here and I really wanted there to be one. So I always assumed I would have to go um, stateside to cosplay because it just wasn't normalized here. But when I saw the reaction to Black Panther from my fellow Bahamians, where they went to the theater in all black or African print, I was like, oh, so y'all are cosplaying. You don't know that you're cosplaying, but you're cosplaying. And I just felt like it was the right time to kind of get people in the mindset that you can do these things here. We don't have to go other places to do them. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll go. I, I went to, oh, sorry, Gussie. Um, I was laughing at you. I was laughing at you earlier. Christian said that always blame Gus. So that's why I was laughing. <laughs> <laughs> well, Christian, boy, I love that man. He, he is a, uh, what is it? Is it, uh, I call, I give him a black card. He's not actually black. But I give him a black card because he's like Indian, Pakistani. And I say, that man, he's one of us, no matter what. <laughs> you hear that, Christian, right? Hopefully you're still watching. All right. So I went to I went to uh, Fan Expo, I think, the first time in 2015 with my cousins. I didn't know what it was. I didn't even know cosplay and stuff was a thing. Because I don't know how you guys are, like, in, in the Caribbean. But we, it's very, um, I guess, kind of like taboo, I guess you should say. In that kind of way, like I mean, because I grew up in like a heavy dancehall reggae culture, and it's like completely taboo. But um, yeah, when I when I went there, and I always liked like, because back home we never had like comics and stuff like that. Like I didn't know where to find comics stuff like that, so I was exposed to like Superman, Christopher Reeves, and stuff at like a, a later date, because everything came on TV like five, ten years later, right? So yeah, so yeah, I was exposed to that, and I always liked it when I grew up. But when I came here and I saw everybody together, I'm like, man, this is it. This is where I belong. I found my home. And then I cosplayed the next year, I think the day, the year after that, uh, I think it was my Deathstroke. Like I just got some stuff from Amazon, like some biker jackets and stuff like that. I just painted it or, or like an orange and, you know, and just came out like that. That's what made me fall in love. BBI? I think my story is like a similar mix between you and SJ. Um, I find that everybody, when it comes to loving the culture of anime, or even comics, it's kind of like a hidden taboo. Like you don't really want nobody to know about mm. that geeky side of you. Um, so when I did the Scorpion thing, everybody thought it was so weird, but still cool at the same time. And I kind of wanted to still kind of keep it up, but I just didn't really know how to do it. I didn't even know cosplay really was a thing. I just enjoyed dressing up, you know? 
And a colleague of mine who worked in the same department at me at the time actually kind of introduced me to other individuals who are into video games and we, they, they formed a, a group called Carry Gamers. And when I got onto it, they, none of them really was really doing um, cosplay, only if they go away to different conventions, they'll cosplay. And I attended my first convention, which was Fan Expo. <laughs> and um, I was like, oh my God, this is a thing. This is really something, you know? And I enjoyed myself. I, I ended up seeing Jessica Negri there for the first time. I was like, who is that? Because she was shouting in the room, I love your costume. I had on like a female version of Naruto and she just came over and take pictures of me. I was like, oh, this is so cool. I don't know who you are, but thank you. You know, and I just kind of kept up with it. And they kind of like encouraged me, motivated me to keep going, you know, doing our cosplay in the Caribbean, cosplay in the BVI. Um, and that's how I kind of really started really in my cosplay journey. Just didn't stop. <laughs> nice. Jazz? Oh, hold on. Okay. Um, so my friend posted a Facebook status one day. He's like, I need somebody to go with me to Clarificon. And I'm like, what's Clarificon? He's like, I got an extra pass. I'm like, what is this? He's like, it's a convention, like, you know, comic book anime. I'm like, oh, I like anime. He's like, come with me. I'm like, okay. So I don't want to like a Sailor Moon shirt, not knowing, because I've never been to a con. I'm like, okay, I'm going to go. And I see like a cosplay parade. And I'm like, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I want to do this. So I think that's what sparked like my cosplay journey. I was like, these guys are cool. I was seeing like giant foam builds. Didn't know it was foam at the time. I thought it was like metal. And I was like, yeah, I want to get into this. <laughs> nice. Can I ask a question? Where's the rip Uh It's in Connecticut. Um, it happens nice. at the Casino Mohegan Sun. Cool, cool, cool. I might. I want to check out. I want to check out different comic cons around. The United States and the world, so I, I gotta check that one. Um, in the Caribbean, which is the biggest like con? Like, which country has the biggest con right now? You guys know? Pretty, uh, I think it's. I would say it's between Puerto Rico Comic Con or um, Anime Con, which is in Barbados. I know there's mm -hmm. one in Jamaica, but I think it's between those two. Mm, okay, okay, yeah, I didn't even know. Yeah, the one in Jamaica is small. I don't know. That's, That's more of an anime one, right? Yeah. Yeah. I notice a lot of Caribbean people like kind of like love anime. Is there a reasoning behind that? Do you guys know why? Honestly, I care. I find I find a lot of people of color in general like. Yeah, love well, anime. that's that's the thing because we like most of the time. It's because we can relate to it in some way, shape, or form. You know what I mean? Like, like Dragon Ball, for example. Like, I'm saying the Saiyans are black people. I don't care what you call them. It's because there's a white guy that calls the monkeys and everything. Ah, like, they're the most powerful in the world. I, you know what I'm saying? Like, you relate to the outcast. Naruto, the same thing. He's an outcast. You're just like, all right, I feel that. Because we, when we were growing up, we were the outcasts. You like Ninja Turtles because they were for people that were outcasts. They weren't allowed to be part of society. And, so, and when we were growing up, we're just like, we felt that in a way, from my experience anyway, for where I'm from in Canada, you know, like I was like mm -hmm. a few black kids in the school. So I related to the anime and stuff like that. Okay. okay. What's going on with Jazz? You just joined the left. Oh, Michael just, Michael just came on. Um, there's like a chat button on the right side. If you guys see it, there's someone talk, someone talking to TJS. Oh. I mean, yeah, SJC. Yeah, you see it? <laughs> there you go. Yeah, you guys can take questions. Gus, you see it? That's what Christian is talking to you. <laughs> yeah. I'm not gonna lie, I don't see that. You don't see it on a, you guys don't see it? Nope. It's on the top uh, right. Oh, there it is. Oh, I see him. This man's yeah. been to me the whole entire time, and I've just ignored him. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Oh, hit up Puerto Rico. Uh, Puerto Rico Comic Con, yeah. That's, a, that's the one we got to go to. Mm. 
I saw I saw Michael come on. Let me see if he's gonna join us. I, I'm interested in trying to go to Brazil's Comic Con because they seem to get everything from Marvel early, like super early. Like really? that, they're the ones who leaked the Spider-Man trailer, um, the Spider-Man uh, Far From Home. They leaked oh, the trailer. Oh, with uh, Andrew and uh, Toby. Yeah, exactly. They they oh, leaked. Okay. They're the ones who leaked it. So I want to go to that con because I feel as though they might give me some information. Even this year. They gave out the toys for Black Panther Wakanda Forever. That's how I built my suit, uh, my uh, M'Baku suit, because I found images that they released. So I want to go there. Uh, Christian wants you to take him with him, with you. Christian, 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 I'll, Christian I'll pick you up and bring you to Oshawa Comic Con. How about that? <laughs> Christian goes all around the world and leaves me here in Canada. He's been to I, Italy. He's been to Indonesia, and he's left me behind. I only go to the States comic cons, all right? <laughs> I guess Jasmine left. Okay, let me see what the next question I got. What's the weather like, by the way? You got I, um, SJ and BVI, you guys are still, you guys are like currently over there, right? I'm, yes, yeah, I'm in, in the bottom Caribbean, yeah. So what's the weather like right now? Because it's, it's kind of cold over here. <laughs> Um, oddly enough, uh, it's been the coldest it's been all year here. What's, what's your version of cold though? Like 25 degrees? <laughs> yeah. Like, um, we're, we're wimps. So like, uh, anything, anything is cold to us, but it's just funny because like our winter has completely changed. It's no longer in December. It's in January. I don't know. Hmm. That's, that's technically ours too. Like it usually gets worse in January, February here than December. Mm -hmm. Like we yeah. got one thing like it, storms, yeah, but it was hot. It was hot <laughs> in December. We were sweating. We were dying. So how do you guys do like big armor builds like over there? How do you guys deal with that? Especially for outdoor uh, shoes. Well, keep in mind our, our community is very young. Um, so we're only just really starting to get into big armor builds and those things. Um we there, there hasn't been much of it. Like it, it, we're literally starting from scratch. Not to say that people aren't doing it, but it's it's more rare than not. Okay, I can't it kind of reminds me of Fred Wolf, to be honest with you, because he he kind of lives in like a smaller island like that in Mauritius, right? So, actually, what I there. can tell you is they've been actually using cardboard. Um, that's that's a huge thing here, especially because um, I don't know if other countries have junk canoe. Um, I think y'all are more carnival based, um, but we have a, a we have a festival called Junk Canoe, and a lot of our cosplayers have backgrounds in it, um, so they're used to using things like cardboard um, to make armor, and <laughs> it's it's amazing what they can do with you know, yeah, such a that type of material. You got to be more creative too when you live there, because I I think um, foam and all that stuff is not that easily accessible, right? So. Yeah, there's, there's a pro, you guys should use Pepacura if you're using cardboard. Uh, Pepacura, it's like a design program where you can make uh, a 2D item, a 3D item, and it gives you a little bit of like uh, uh, it gives you numbers. It's like connect the dots kind of thing, and you put it together, and that will be great if you're using cardboard because cardboard is easy to fold, so the folds will be nice to do with the Pepacura instructions. Look awesome. that Thank you. For that. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll think I'll find it and I'll send it on the chat. Yeah, Thank send you. it on the chat. Yeah. 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 So okay, I guess we covered the cosplay scene. Oh, uh, Jazz, did you did, did Jazz answer that question? What was the Jazz, what's the cosplay scene like in Jamaica right now? Um, it's not too big, but they have like one or two conventions um, a year where people actually do come out. It is growing. Um, most of the people are just doing like TikToks or, um, you know, things on Instagram reels and stuff like that. But, um, they do for this one convention, they do a lot of armor builds and I'm hoping they're like, you're not passing out because I'm going to pass out in this regular <laughs> cosplay. They're doing like thin EVA phone builds and I'm like, why? But it, it's, it's coming. It's coming. I'm loving it. I don't know how they're doing it inside those, um, builds, but we have junk to go to in Jamaica. 
Yeah. So I guess they're just maybe maybe they're used to it. <laughs> oh, what was the last time you've been back? Um, four years ago. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I don't even know what the cosplay scene like is in Guyana right now. I've never been back since I came here. I to go to the convention. Yeah, I've never been back since I came. I need to go back. Definitely do. Gussie, were you born here? Or where did Gussie go? Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm just no. Were you, I was asking you, were you born here or were you born in? Uh... Yeah, I was born in Canada. I was born in Canada. I'm a much here? Saint Lucia and Dominica. So my parents met up here and they, they did the thing. And here's the product. So like I'm, okay. I haven't been back. I was actually supposed to go down this February to Dominica again uh, with my girls, uh, but the, like again, can't find a flight because they're just because of Trinidad's carnival. All the flights are booked out, no direct flights, so we have to find different means. So only like one or two of my families repre are representing this year for family reunion. Gussie, you 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 remind me of a topic on TikTok that like I kind of fight. I kind of have like a little fight going on with a few people on TikTok with the first generation Caribbean people, Caribbean kids of Caribbean people. Oh. And you are you are like a perfect example. Because like, I see people on there, they all like the people that the kids that are born here that are from yeah. Of Caribbean parents, they try to speak for Caribbean people, and that annoys the shit out of me. <laughs> Bro, that annoys like it annoys. I don't know if you guys follow like J, his name is Jay Lion on uh on uh TikTok. He's it's Trinity too, but we, me and him have this back and forth all the time, man. I mean, especially they put on the accent and all this stuff too, and it, it just sounds well. I mean, embracing the culture and and trying to speak for us is like two completely different things. Like to me, if you're not born there. You can't say you're completely Caribbean, right? You could say I'm, um, I'm Canadian of, Carib of Caribbean descent. Yeah, yeah exactly. but you can't say I'm Caribbean. Man, and I we was, have this fight all the time on TikTok, man. I have a, I have the same thing that I tell my daughter too. Like my daughter, I was trying to say that she's Jamaican. I'm like, you're first born, like, you're second generation Canadian, but your background is Jamaican. Same yeah, Jamaican. I got, I tell my son that all the time. Like, you need to know. Don't do that to them. <laughs> Like, guess what? I know some people that was born in the States, but then they went, you know, their parents send them over to Jamaica, and they, they know more about the history of the culture than people who were born. But at the end of the day, by the end of the day, your birth certificate is all you need. You know what I mean? If no one can take that away from you. Yeah. But I know, you know what I mean? was born in the island and come here and be more Yankee than anybody else, so... <laughs> Oh, you can be proud. I'm saying, uh, like, be, you can be proud of where you were born. Oh, you definitely can. Yeah, you definitely can. Be proud of your background as well. There's nothing. I'm not saying that. Nope, you're not Jamaican. It was like you are. You, that is your descent. You, you're from that descension, but you were Canadian first, right? You know, well, yeah. You know, honestly, like, I never heard of. I never heard of like Indo and Afro and all this stuff that they're coming up with now when I lived back home. Never heard of like this segregation type of thing. I never heard it like when I lived back home. But we have this conversation all the time. And like it's this first generation of, of kids that are, are coming up with all these things, you know what I mean? And to me, to me, it, seg to me it segregates the people more than it actually brings us together as a community. But the Caribbean, I'll be honest with you, like out of all the all the, all the races, Caribbean people are the only ones that don't support each other i'll be honest with you what do you say that we do don't man we don't we don't really support each other uh, you don't I believe don't, that i don't agree with that i don't agree with I, that. I i i like a lot of communities i feel like well from my personal experience mm. personal experience wise like i feel like a lot of especially like family members and stuff like that will like you know what i mean aren't gonna help you out we'll talk you know you know any certain things nah like uh, my family i feel as though my family's so involved they're involved in everything. They're like, if somebody dies, they, they get it. They get a pot going. Everybody pitches in to help with the burial and stuff like that. I, I think it's a great community. I think it's better than most communities. They, they, I believe. Well, for me, my experience is that I have like descendants. I like my my family. My my dad and my mom have like sisters and brothers, like seven each, right? So, yeah. like I I come from a big family. Like even family. Yeah. Like I don't know about until like something happens, but the one something does happen, they're there for you. No matter. Yeah, that's what. good to hear. Yeah, yeah. They like 
sure they might be in your business a bit from time to time. Like, you know, they might say well, something. That's, yeah, that's a Caribbean thing. So. That's a Caribbean thing, but I mean, like, I believe that they're, they're well-intentioned. Let's put it that way. Well, I guess it must be the guy he's saying that. <laughs> how, how are you guys with, like, your families and, and cosplaying and stuff like that, especially living in Bahamas and stuff like that? How do you – how's your family – um, my, I, I'm very lucky to have a very supportive family, um, but I, I do part, I partially see your point in terms of we don't support one another um, because that's been my struggle with kind of normalizing cosplay here is mm -hmm. a lot of people still don't understand it or they think it's something that white people do, <laughs> American people do, you know? Yeah, 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 uh, yeah, you're right. So it's... It's something that, you know, I, I think it's a catch-22 in a way. It, on one hand, I feel like during, especially like the Olympics and stuff, you really see how Korean people support each other, especially like if one of us goes out of the running, we're always there like, oh my God, Jamaica has to get it next because yeah, yeah. You, you see that, that, that love and that spirit that we have for one another. But there is something to be said that sometimes in our own communities, we don't support one another. Um, which is something I'd love to see change um, and maybe yeah. get some yeah. collaboration between um, cos have form a cosplay Caricom if we can. That would be, yeah, that would be amazing. BVI? Um, I have great support when it comes to my family. They support me in my, my cosplay stuff. They think it's weird, but they think they, they're happy that it makes me happy. Um, the community, it's a little 50-50 as well. Um, I have some people that would actually tell me, I see your stuff, I really like it. But it's like a secret thing, as if they don't want other people to know that they're into it, as I said earlier. And I'm like, but you're not helping support me. And, you know, so... Why are you doing it in secret? Why are you only just telling it to me in my, my face and not just help share or, you know, repost or something or help so you could boost the algorithm so other people can actually see it. Simple things like that could actually help Caribbean supporters. Um, I find there's more support with other Caribbean, other Caribbean cosplayers which is great, especially with um, Instagram and finding everybody like um, Empress Jasmine. And um, I have another one from Barbados, um, Sapphire. So all of that, I just think that, you know, it's really great. It, there are some support in some, some ways. Yeah, the online community is, is great, but I feel like the older generation, like our parents and uncles and stuff like they don't completely understand. and. When I first started doing they will it, never understand. when I started posting it on Facebook, like they would like talk so much trash because they don't understand. Like, why is he dressing up going down the street like that? You know? Really? Like, mm -hmm. yeah, bro. Like, what? I had that. I'm like, it, like my, pic my picture got probably like sent to every family member. Really? <laughs> like, I, like, I find that that see, I guess I'm um, like like the Dominican side, they they support me. Um, they they tell. They tell other people about my work. They go, that's my cousin. He goes to different mm -hmm. cons and he does other things and he makes these things. Like one of my biggest supporters is my uncle who says, You should be working for these comic book co companies, companies yeah. doing your thing, right? You should go and put your portfolio out there and do that. And then I got my cousin uh, from St. Lucia who's just like, That's my cousin. That's my cousin. Everywhere he goes, he promotes my stuff. It's it's weird to hear that people aren't supporting you guys, man. Like, well, like I said, my my family is very supportive. My sister is one of my biggest uh, fans. She will yeah. like scream my name, you know, anytime I'm out and, and yeah. my work. And I have I, I do have some support here, but it's it's mostly more community based, where it's like there's there's a lot of bucking heads. And I think BVI also mentioned her family is very supportive of her as well. So it, it, it's more of just community I, because we're mine in... Mine took a lot of explaining. Yeah. Mine took a lot of explaining to, to, to do. Like with my, especially with my mom and stuff, I had to like explain what cosplay was. And because you grew up like... She grew up like, you know, like back home, like completely like isolated from all kind of like, you know, stuff like that. So it's like 
it's so weird to her to see. I mean, yeah, I guess so. Like, my, I would wish I, I had. I don't have that experience. I guess I'm. I guess I'm very sheltered, because like even the only thing I find is that like here where we are, you know, um, I find that like the women here get more play or like more showtime, which is fine. I don't have a problem with it. Like for me being a, a black guy and just just being a male, I won't get as much reach as somebody else uh, out here. But it's still a good community to me. Like our community in Toronto, oh, definitely, yeah, yeah, they, they're well knit. They're like they have their cliques, of course. They always have cliques, but I seem to be part of every clique. Uh, I just fit in. <laughs> yeah, does he, does he but we're in the islands. Hmm? But we're in the islands. We're in the islands, so. The whole cosplay, anime, all that vibes is just kind of slowly unraveling. And I just think over time that support will just kind of start growing once, you know, they start digging into it. So the younger generation, yes, because they're already exposed to the anime. And, you know, once they find out, hey, got somebody in, in BVI actually cosplaying, this is so cool. You know, they start going on. They will start support and they will start liking and all that stuff. So I think it's just two different dynamics because you're you're living in the US where it's already a big thing and exposed versus us who live in the, in the Caribbean who yeah. look at it as why are you watching cartoons? Yeah, exactly. Why you That's exactly what like I'm that? saying. Exactly what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I That's exactly that. how my mom is. Mm-hmm. So what it's funny. To help? What can we do to help? Help you guys. What can we do to help y'all? It's funny you mentioned um, the fact that you know you're uh, you feel like uh, women get more exposure than you. I literally, just when we I had a panel earlier today where um, literally we only had one uh, black male on the on the panel, and he I I made sure that the question was asked. You know, um, I feel like cosplaying is such a female dominated, woman dominated area. Is there anything that you feel, you know, we as a community can do to better support Black men in the cosplay community here? And I feel like that's a very important question for um, worldwide. You know, what what can we be doing to uh, make sure that men get more exposure? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Men are Jay trash. Stowe, Jay just commented and said, uh, it's pop- more popular in the States, but it's very judgmental. I can't speak to that. Uh, Gussie, you've been over there to the U.S., so... What? You find yeah. it's very judgmental? I, you see, but but I, everywhere that I go, my experience has been beautiful. Like, I... Like, it's been... Like, I... I it's not... I don't think everything is sunshines and rainbows everywhere I go. But where I, when I do go somewhere, it's like... Like, I've been to Dragon Con, and Dragon Con is in Atlanta, and... They shut down all of downtown Atlanta, have a parade in one of the biggest cities in, in the U.S. And it's like six hotels and a gigantic party all in one. And I've never experienced like a city where like something where a city would shut down for a cosplay event. New York. Mm-hmm. I- I've been to New York Comic Con and New York is a hard place. Right. And New York Comic Con. They have two. They have the anime con, and then they had New York Comic Con. Both of those are welcoming. Like even when people see you on the street, they will be like, "Yo, what's up, Captain America?" Blah blah blah. You look awesome. Like they're they engage you, and they don't go, "Oh, look at that weirdo." I don't know if everybody does it, but like it seems as though it's welcome wherever I go. Like even Florida, the same thing. Like Matsu, uh, Ale Matsu, I just came from there. And you, like they give you just like a whole there's a whole block of hotels where everybody's just wearing costumes uh with Chris Christmas costumes and it's crazy. Like yeah. my sense is that everybody loves it and it's like it's welcome. So I like I've never been ridiculed other than like on Instagram where people are like weird, they're just like you you're black, you can't cosplay a white guy. Well Jay's still saying because money talks, I don't know in what sense it means like in buying costumes and the costumes that you wear, the quality of your costumes, I don't know what do you mean, what what they mean by that. Money talks. Yeah, I don't I don't know. I th- I think he was referring to the uh con scene that uh Gussie was talking about in terms of uh it closing down an entire city. 
Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Okay, I see that because like they're getting okay. support. like Dragon Con gets support from the city because it brings a lot of money into the city at the yeah. same time. And it happens during Labor Day and all these tourists show up and people are just spending money while they're there, right? So it it's a beneficial thing for the city. New York has the same thing. People are coming from all over the world to do this. San Diego, right? All these places have they, they welcome the cosplay community. So I, I mostly because like, it's it's normalized there. Yeah. And I think that's why I keep using the term about normalizing it here because it's it's not normalized here. And I'm sure um BBI can talk to her experience about it not being normalized there either. Um yeah. it's something that those of us that actually stuck our necks out and were like, we're gonna do this, we're the ones kind of pioneering, you know, the scene here. We're the ones that have to kind of get the ridicule so that those after us hopefully don't have to deal with it. So um how many like cons do you so how many cons do you have? Like do you, for instance, uh slaves, uh like you only have like one con a year or is it like two? Like so funny story. Um we i I've, i'm actually part of the co i'm the cosplay coordinator for the con here we just started last year um we've had a mini con that we do the last sunday of every month or try to put on the last sunday of every month um that has been very successful and we just turned it into a full-fledged con that we hope to have international guests come down to next year uh or this year rather because it's oh, what month is that actually uh, it'll be in December. Okay. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Gussie, yeah. I guess we're going to go. Yeah. Like, that's, <laughs> I, like, yeah. Believe me, people who are in the US and Canada, when it, if you say December and there's a con somewhere and it's hot and it, you, there's a way that we can get a trip out of it, like an explore somewhere, we're going to go. Right. And just It's all about promotion at this point. You just, yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's all about. Um, so we only have the one <laughs> it's called gong con so uh if you all are interested in coming down please hit me up um i, I would love to talk to y'all more about potentially doing that um bvi how many do y'all have we don't have any conventions um we're trying to see if we could actually do like a mini one for like some time now um hasn't been successful <laughs> it's, it's very stressful it's a lot of work mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Jazz, you want to weigh in? She's in slow motion. <laughs> <laughs> You'll write your stuff down. Now. I'll say it for you. Yeah, Jazz, you're in slow mo right now. You're in slow motion. Oh, gosh. Yo, Jazz, you're killing me. <laughs> Yeah, write that in the group group write that in the group chat for me. Yeah, um uh where Dominican Knight said something. Where was it? Oh Dominican Knight said there's a lot of gatekeeping. You agree? Of course. Yeah, yeah of course. course. Do you guys do you guys believe there's gatekeeping in the Caribbean right now because the cons are so small? Has it got to that level yet already? There's gatekeeping already? In the beginning yes. stages of cosplay, really? Yes. Really, I didn't think I didn't think it would be that way, especially in the beginning stages of of cosplay. Well, the the gatekeeping would be something like yeah, saying somebody can't do a certain yes. character, right? Yeah, yeah. Imagine a bunch of like just being black in in instance. Like if you wanted to do Naruto, and somebody would just come like, yo, that guy's a white guy, you can't do that. That's gatekeeping, and I I can see that happening all the time. But that does that happen with other cosplayers or just people outside of the cosplay community? Depends. Um, I've, because I've I feel like people outside places. of the outside of the cosplay community probably don't have that understanding as cosplayers would have. Because I saw um, who was Adventure Bros. Yeah, yeah. Having yeah. a little issues with his Omni Man and, and stuff like that. I'm like, it's mostly people that are outside of the community that make those kind of racist comments, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've never had any gatekeeping from anybody. Here in the BBI, I've had gatekeeping online because keyboard hey. warriors, you know, everybody's always more confident to say whatever. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get uh, Dominican Knight to join us right now. Uh, Knight, I'm gonna send you the. I know you want to weigh in. Oh, Sean said he's coming. B BBI, like, 
the thing with that uh, that I always I always try to avoid keyboard worrying is like mm -hmm. they always want to give us their opinion no matter what and it's like really I don't care what you have to say like do you understand what I'm saying like I did this costume because I enjoyed doing it I wanted to make it and some people are like well you know you're you okay. can't cosplay that you're not the right weight class or something right and you're just like who cares I enjoy don't it. get me wrong you know I'm not I'm not arguing with them because I just find it's a waste of time in NG. It will have some cosplayers saying, oh, you need to fight and defend. And I'm like, it's a waste of time. I just delete them. Um, but I've also been experienced with the gatekeeping thing. Not really to say that I can't cosplay because of my color, but I remember even at Fan Expo in Canada and I was a female version of Luigi and a dad was like, look, look, Mario and Luigi, because my other friend was Mario and the little child watched and said, Mario and Luigi are men, not females. And I was like, oh, okay. Uh, what, kids are, like, kids, are okay. Kind of, kids are very, uh, uh, they're, they're not filtered, right? So they're up front. I know. They're very up front, yeah. They're the, they're the best. They're very, they're very visual, yeah. yeah they're, they're the best. Mm -hmm. But like, I mean, you got to give them a little bit of credit because, you know, they're young and everything like that. So uh, BVI, when were you in Fan Expo? 2015? Um, seventeen. Okay, so okay, seventeen. That's I, I think that's uh, yeah, maybe my second year going to that. I was working security okay. that time. I was I was doing security uh, at, the, at the con. Yeah, you, I used to do that oh, with okay. with uh, Fan Expo. We used to <laughs> the, where the autographs were for the celebrities. That's where I used to stay. I think that year Carrie Fisher slapped me in the face with glitter. Mm. Yeah, I think before she died, it was just like she slapped me straight in the face. Bow! With glitter. That she called the Joker. Me. Was she mad about something? Uh, oh, it was because she, want, she wanted to give me a blessing. And she mm. just took glitter, just like that, in my <laughs> face. And then she kissed me. And then she's like, you've been blessed. And I was like, <laughs> I've never experienced this in my life. And I didn't know what to do because no one's ever slapped me that hard in my face like that. It was an interesting year after Fan Expo because immediately after leaving, um, we were trying to get back home. And that's when we had a Hurricane Irma um, coming into the Caribbean. So I was trying to get in before our airport shut down. And then it shut down before our flight actually took off from Puerto Rico. And I was actually stuck in Puerto Rico for two weeks. Yes. <laughs> So imagine yeah. just coming from a convention and then you have to end up spending two weeks worth of money yeah. trying to survive in a different country. US and then chartering and then chartering a boat for over two thousand dollars to get back to the BBI. I was like Wow Actually actually when I posted the the um the request to do this this uh, podcast episode, there were a lot of like Puerto Ricans and Dominicans that wanted to join, but I feel like there might, I thought there would be like a language barrier, but I don't think so. Now have it doing it. We should have, we should have had them on. I, I thought I would do something separate for like the Spanish speaking Caribbean countries. Uh, I think you are. Yeah, yeah. But maybe, maybe we could mix everyone together. Yeah, it would be nice. <laughs> Definitely do it again. Um, <laughs> let me see. I got another question here uh, for you guys. Uh, Jay, Jay said, uh, Jay, the tiger said, you see more positivity in major cities, but in smaller cities, you will not see the same love. Mm. Uh, I guess that's true. Yeah, okay. I see. <laughs> Kids are the worst critics. Yeah, they're the worst. It, it, that's just based on population, though, I, I, I believe. Like, even here in, like, Oshawa, you're not going to get that same recognition that you would get. Because I know a lot of people that actually put a lot of effort into building their costumes and go to smaller cons and be like, you know what I mean? Yeah. People won't really care. But when you go to Fan Expo where big like other cosplayers are, they'll be like, oh my God, how you make that? How you make that? You know? They actually know the effort that goes into it. Yeah. Yeah. I feel that. I was I was waiting for Dominican night. Let me see if he's coming. Can't join the say, but I'm loaded. Oh, I can't join. Okay. My bad, bro. All right. So Sean Shang said he's having what? Something popped up with his kids. He's doing something. Um, <laughs> I really was looking forward to talking to Shawshank. I love his um, 
his uh was it his build build <laughs> black panther was sick too man black and, man. And, a, and a black manta holy shit when i saw that black manta i was like Ooh. Ha- the hawk man the hawk man one he made me want to get back into shape i was just like let me let me get back to the chip because <laughs> that man shirtless with the wings on his back and i was just like bravo bravo you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah, I gotta go. You gotta go with Michael to the gym, man. Michael's been a, like, he's crazy with that. Yeah, I just started going back too. I start, I just started going back. See for we, that for the MK for the MK thing that we got going on. Oh, you're trying to get buff, eh? <laughs> you know, I yeah, I can't stand next to Roberto and, and Christian. You know, yeah. <laughs> Where's <laughs> inside outfits? You know, you don't exactly. you gotta, you wanna be nice and trim. Yeah, I, I know Christian's trying to like tease me with all the food pics that he be posting when he goes on trips. You, you uh let me ask you guys uh if you, you guys have problems i see like for us we have to go to the gym during the winter and everything mm-hmm. but you guys have the benefit and the, the, the no doubt no like, doubt of the heat and being outside and being just active. walking just walking like, like you have you you have the ability to be active you know what i mean like you can go outside and just take a walk and lose weight whereas we have to be I mean, God, we <laughs> busy. We got like a hill, we got like a McDonald's and mountains. Like yeah, like everything is God. so like accessible here. That's I find. But also, heat stroke is a thing. Heat stroke. Heat stroke. I went to Jamaica for like I went to Jamaica for like three weeks. I think a few years back, and I lost quite a bit of weight just walking back and forth and just eating like you know like the fresh food, the seafood, and stuff like that. Not eating the stuff from here. I'm like, it's mm-hmm. crazy. If I lived out there, I'd be like super. And a lot of people aren't like super ripped, but they're just, they're more toned, right? I mean, based from walking and the fishing and all that stuff, that physical activity, right? So. Caribbean food could be very fatty too, you know, depending on what it is you're eating. Oh, Guyanese food is yeah, Guyanese food is terrible. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I will get. Oh, that that's gonna segue into the question now. Your top five Caribbean foods. Damn. How's my Caribbean? <laughs> I can't answer that question. I can't. It's too much. I've got five. You don't have five? You don't have three. I have I have, I have more than five. Don't you see the size of me? I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> name them, no, name some, name some. Your go-to, your go-to. Uh, it's always there's always gotta be oxtail. There's gotta be oxtail, some rice and beans, you know what I'm saying? Rice and peas, sorry, if for others. You're technically right though, it is beans, but okay. But uh, <laughs> curry chicken. Um, chicken curry, yeah. Okay, continue. Curry chicken, curry chicken. Um, uh, we, we're not doing this. <laughs> we're not doing this. Sauce, like some sauce from time to oh, time. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, I haven't had sauce in so long. Yeah, man. I haven't had sauce since I came here. Actually, what? my dad used to make it. Yeah, my dad used to make that when he when he passed away. Like I never had it since that. Ah, uh, every Sunday I make sure pigtail. Um, damn. What else? Saltfish on Sundays. Bacon sausage, uh, yeah. That's on my list. Sausage. Cucumber, like our cucumber, though. Like, so that's what I'm trying to say. Like, our cucumber is unhealthy. Like, let me just tell you. Like, it has like uh, oil, salt, pepper, uh, vinegar, all that, all in there. It's, it's cucumber by itself is just good enough. It's kind of like a, um, it's kind of like a chow kind of. Yeah, yes. Like, in yeah, eating, like we even use it for the sauce too. Um, mm-hmm. damn, I'm talking about food. Let me just stop because I'm hungry. SJ, let me hear what you got. He he has some of my answers. Um, oxtail, sauce, for sure. Um, I'm just going to say curry because we're not getting into the debate. <laughs> um, <laughs> macaroni, uh, baked macaroni is a huge staple for me. Um, I forgot about that one. Yeah. And uh, conch fritters. Uh, any Americans watching, it's not conch. It's conch. Conch fritters. <laughs> um, and guava duff. Wow, what's that? What's that? We all don't have duff. Um, it's it's a dessert. So um, guava. It's made with guava, and yeah. um, it's like a bread, and it's like covered in guava sauce. Excuse me. It's delicious. Me. That sounds so sweet and delicious. Yeah, send me the recipe. Send us, send us the recipe. Send me the recipe. So so what's gonna happen is when y'all come down for GomCon, <laughs> I'm going to take y'all for some duff. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds like a plan. Let me uh, get some uh, red snapper and be done with it. I'm good. Dominican, yes. Dominican Knights wants you to bring me. 
to <laughs> Dragon Con, it says here. So, Gussie, I guess you got to. Hey, dra- I didn't book a hotel this year. So, unless Dominican Night is going to put us up somewhere, we don't have a place to stay. We could always get the tickets. The tickets are cheap. To sleep somewhere, you need somebody. You need a house, bro. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, check, check the chat. Let's <laughs> check the chat. Uh, no, Jay. Not not everything is about you. Uh, <laughs> sorry, we know each other personally. Um, no, uh, I know a lot of. Well, for instance, SpongeBob, I think, is the one that popularized the whole conch. Mm-hmm. Conch. Uh, uh, saying when it's actually conk. But no, it's not about you, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, BVI, I'll let you go, then I'll go last. Okay. Um, pea soup is my number one. It's not no green pea soup because I've seen some green peas. I don't know what nonsense that is. So pea soup is technically like a brown soup, but it has um, Pigtail, dumplings, um, sweet potatoes, and kidney beans is a savory dish. But we in the BBI like to put milk and sugar in it. So it's a little sweet, not overly sweet, but it's still savory at the same time. Love it. Boiled fish with provisions. Love it. Um, It has to be like lots of onions and peppers. And how I like it, I like it in a mayo sauce. Again, fattening. Don't hate it until you try it. I guarantee you're going to love it. Um, crack conk. It's crack good. conk. You don't promote drugs on this. <laughs> no, it's actually the conk meat, but you tenderize it and you kind of um you fry it. So it's mm-hmm. it's fried like in a batter. So that's why it's called crack conk. I've never I've never uh, had I've never had conk to be honest. I I have uh, never had that as well. I'm not a big seafood person. I'm not a crack kind of person, so. <laughs> you can have cracked chicken as well. Um, uh, doesn't sound appetizing at all. But, um, so, 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 so you guys have goat. You do goat, uh, goat head soup. Do you do that? Uh, yes. I don't eat it, but yes. Yeah, we do it, but I don't eat it. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I, I thought I was the only one because, like, somebody, like, mom, like, they made it for me once, and I, I looked at that, and I was just like, you don't even take. The hair off the goat. You just put that all in there, huh? Just and cow foot too. What about what about chicken foot? You guys eat chicken foot? Of course. I don't eat chicken foot. No. 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 My uh, my father was a fisherman, and he used to <laughs> eat the fish eyes as well. The fish eyes? Hey. Yeah. It's, I don't. I don't do it. <laughs> it's so sweet. Is that oh what you? Gosh. Eat? No, I never had that either. What? My, my, my last. <laughs> Yeah, well, go ahead. Go ahead, BBI. One more? I was saying, yeah, I just did four. My last one is mofongo. Anything with plantain? Oh. oh I've never had that either. You never had mofongo? No. You have had that, Gussie? Oh, my God. Me? No. Oh, my how God. You, you I'll have Puerto Rico will come after you. No, I don't make it. <laughs> when I go to Puerto Rico, I go and have it. Oh, oh okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. But it's, it's um, I can't, I can't really... Say how it's cooked. All I just know it's um with plantain. They boil the plantain and then they mash it. Um, and it has like stuffed meat, like pork or chicken or beef, inside inside of the plantain. It's that like delicious. in a stone. Um, and then it'll have like a gravy sauce on on top of it. Sometimes it comes with rice, um, beans to the side. It's really great. Jeez, you're making me hungry. And if you're this. talking about and if we're talking about desserts, any um, guava tart, that's my thing. Ooh. Guava tart. Or wow. any local fruits. Gus, you'd be missing out, man. Uh, I, I don't eat that much sweets, but guava's my thing, though. I love that. Mm. Yeah, guava's good. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I just got to get a consensus. Have any of you tried black pudding? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. No? no? It's, made out of, it's made out of like blood. Oh, you gotta tell them that's I don't eat it. Yeah. I know what it is. I yeah. just don't eat it. Okay. I don't eat it either. But I'll be honest. I, I, I don't know how gussy you guys make your black pudding though. Let me hear how you guys make yours. I, do you just I. You know what? My aunt makes that, and it's just. How do I say this? I don't want to say and make people grossed out. It's 
it's going to grow blood. Blood. It's blood. It's blood. But you have it's to explain it. <laughs> like, you can use lamb blood, cow blood, whatever, right? I, I believe so. It's, yeah, it's just like... It's British. It, it came from England, pretty much. Really? That's what yeah. it came from? I thought yeah, we it No, that, 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 I'm pretty sure it came from England, yeah. Nasty. They eat a lot of blood pudding over there. But do you guys make yours with bread, or do you guys make yours with rice? Uh, with rice. Okay, yeah, we make ours with rice. Yeah. But, but, the, from, but there's a thing. The ones that you get from England and the one that my aunt makes, completely different. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. We add our own. Like, we add flavor. Flavor. There's so much yeah, flavor in yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Whereas when the other thing, I was just like, did you guys just really just take whatever was inside the animal and just put it on the table? We're like, my aunt crushes up everything, puts it, makes her own sausage, has the seasoning in, adds some pepper, some pepper yeah. sauce, not Tabasco, not like Frank's Red Hot pepper sauce. There's a you eat, it with, you eat it with mango chutney too? No, 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 no just the bread. Just bro, you gotta dip that in the mango, bro. Mango with the hot sauce and stuff, crushed up, boiled it, crush it up. Oh my god, dip it in there. Uh, you're making me hungry. Anyway, anyway, let me go on to my top five. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, not really a top five, but these are like my staples. Uh, pretty much, I, I, I'll go, I'll say curry, not to avoid the debate as well. Uh, there is no debate. Question Rice or roti? Ooh. Like, what do you guys prefer? I like, my, I, 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 if I had to choose, I'd choose roti. What kind of roti though? Like, what like it has yeah. to, uh, I don't know what you guys call it though. It's like we have like oil roti where you, you clap it and stuff like that. I know Trinidad calls it like bust up shot and stuff like that. So. Because for not us, hard, roti not like, not, not is like, not, not like, yeah. for us, roti is actually the meat that's wrapped up it, uh, around the dough. And yeah. then when I go internationally, when I and I see roti and I ask, I want roti, they give me the, the dough. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, this is not roti. That's so it. your roti is if, prepared with the curry inside of it. Yes, yes, exactly. No, yeah, we do that too. But you gotta ask them. You want them a, you want a chicken curry roti? Yeah. They'll, they'll prepare it that way for you. Yeah. Oxtail, go, choose, and then they wrap it up for you. I don't understand. They just give you. You don't. Isn't the what is it called? Pelau? Not pelau. Pelau is the the rice. rice. I love that shit too. That shit is yum yum. Yeah, oh. So, like in terms in terms of your question, if it's already prepared in it, I love roti. But if they're just giving you bread, then I prefer it with rice. <laughs> but, uh, but that's one thing I don't like is my roti, like my meat wrapped in the roti. I love to dip it in there. What? I can't eat it like a like a like a burrito. I don't like eating it like a burrito. So you um, like it more like the East Indian style? Yeah, I like my my curry on one side, my roti one side. I dip it in there. And... No, Treat I it like naan. Uh, yeah, I like yeah. it. Yeah. Clean, you know what I'm saying? I like it clean. Like I just bite into it, and it might be. No, nah, I can't. I, I love um, that. my second one is pepper pot. I don't know if you guys ever had pepper pot. Yes. Mm-hmm. I never had pepper pot. Yes. Well, it it, I've had it it came from like the indigenous people of Guyana, so they use they make it with it, it's like a pot that never ends technically. Like they'll keep adding meats and stuff to it over over time. Like wild animals, they'll add stuff to it over time. It's made with like cassava. Yeah, that, yeah, that's yeah. The, you never had it, you gotta try it. The Arawaks, like, who were the indigenous people yeah, yeah. here, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, uh, my mom makes it with like cow heel, oxtail, beef, like a whole bunch of stuff she puts in there. Kind of uh, sound like oil down. And it's kind of like kind of the same. The, I think yeah. the, the cassava makes it a little different. Uh, my, my fourth, my third is cook up rice. It's kind of like pilau. Um, pilau, yeah, yeah. 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 It's kind of like rice and peas or rice and beans, Jamaican people. It is beans, not peas. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, cook up is kind of kind of the equivalent to that. Um, stew chicken, stew beef, my go-to for sure. And then breakfast, I would have to choose bacon sausage for sure. Cheese, nice. Uh, let me let me just get these out of the way here. Uh, your boy Jay uh, Slay says, uh, "What in the vampire?" To the blood pudding <laughs> response, right? Well, knock it to your tribe, bro. <laughs> also, 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 uh, Dominican uh, Knight has a question. Here's one for y'all. Uh, the question of the panel for the whole panel is: If money wasn't an object, what obscure character would you build, buy, um, or wear to a con? Why does it have to be obscure, Dom? 
Yeah. He wasn't an option. What would you that, make? That, that's a tough one, though. Is it? No, yeah. I have mine, but it's a tough one for a lot of people. Let's start with Slay. Go ahead. Do it. I, I kind of have like two. If money really wasn't an option, I would yeah. love to build like a death scythe from Gundam Wing. This girl went all the way. Just the biggest thing ever. Okay. <laughs> with a side, with a big ass side. I want it. Yeah, I just, damn. Uh, when, we, when we post this, just make sure you put a picture of it. Because that thing oh, is. Yeah, yeah. All right. BVI, yeah. what, what about you? Um, I'm going to say what's my absolute. I need to do this cosplay, and I just don't know even how to start. I'm sure it's an easy thing to do, but. I want to do like Angie Mon from, from Digimon. Oh, you want to do that, Digimon? You know who she has to talk to about Digimon? Yes. If you need to talk to anybody about Digimon, well, I got a boy named Swaggy Cosplay. Uh, follow him. Swaggy's Swaggy. amazing. Swaggy Cosplay. Okay. Boy. Uh, he did a War Greymon. He's done almost all of them. Just mm. get in touch with him. And I, I, I kid you not, he'll help you out. He'll give you a little bit of pointers to tell you where to get some stuff. You can make that happen anytime, okay? <laughs> I mean, believe me, believe me. All right. Definitely. What about you, Gus? See, I'm still... It's funny because I'm still making what I my dream cosplay is for the longest while, and I've made it three times now, and I just haven't shown anybody. Like, uh, I want to make an Iron Man suit that is like fully adaptable and and everything with the lights and everything. I've made it twice now and I'm going on my third time and I'm just not happy with it no matter what I do. So I'm going to cancel that and I'm going to put Cyborg, a complete Cyborg outfit from like the Teen Titans. Okay. Like old mm -hmm. and in, have my face, all lights, everything. That's, if, I, if I could do that, I'd buy that. You should speak to um, Roberto about the Iron Man, too. Yeah. No, no, no. I want to do the Iron Man. The Iron Man is something that if I think I will never complete because if I do, I will stop cosplaying because that's the one. From the time I was a little kid to now, I've always wanted to make an Iron Man suit. Like, you know, I, I grew up on, on Iron Man and Techno Man and Gundam Wing, right? Mm -hmm. I've always been one of those things where if I got a giant robot, I'm going to... Right, so Iron Man is the closest one I can do. If I do it, I'm done with cosplay. I'll be like, I retire. That's it. <laughs> so I know because it has to be perfect. Yeah, I only saw mine, mine like maybe like a few years back. But I know it's an impossible build. Um, a Batwing, like a fully functioning Batwing would be sick. Batwing, like yeah, Luke, uh, the Luke. Yeah, yeah. Luke Fox. Yeah. You ever yeah. seen that? Ever seen, with the light, the light up chest, and I want the, the wings to come out and everything fully functioning mechanical. Like that would be sick. Yeah, that would be sick. I think I'm gonna steal that from you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is a sick. Uh, yeah, if you go ahead, man, go ahead. No, no, no. You know what's funny about what I just said there? Because I've always wondered, like, how people get so mad about that, where they go, like, you say, "I'm gonna do this character," and then, I mean, and somebody steals it, and then some, like, and that's what they say. They said you steal it. It's like, but it's like we're just we're doing the character. We could all do the character, and like see our iterations. Like I, I, like I, I've met some people like online. And I have some really good friendships with people online where we all were making the same thing at the same time. Like cosplay Nay, he did a yeah. a Miles Morales twenty twenty suit that I was making. Mm -hmm. Like I did it, I did it first, but I mean like. He came to me or he was like, yo, where'd you get this and where'd you get that? And instead of being like, nah, I can't tell you where I did this or how I did this, we like came together and like five different guys have made this suit together. Like they're just like, we just talked and we're just like, hey, this is what I did. What did you do? And then he was like, oh, I did this. I got this guy to do it for me and blah, blah, blah. Like when people say like, you stole my costume, it's like, technically I didn't. I made it before you, but... Mm -hmm. Cares, you can still do it. No one's exactly. Gonna... Yeah, it's like I actually want to. I actually want to get that Spider-Man uh, um, Zentai. 
two that you have on there, SJ. That's the PS4 one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one I wanted. I wanted right, that right off I Amazon. Have, oh, oh, did you? I bought. I had to. I bought the file and everything, and it looks amazing. Let me see it. No, I'm saying it's right on Amazon. Yeah, because what what I do is I buy the file from like uh, Super Geek or Neo or something. Then I'll have it printed over at um, Zentai Zone, like custom to me. But if you can get it on Amazon, what the hell? I might do this, do that too. No well, way. I mean, the 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 benefit of that is that yours is is custom. Um, <laughs> I would do that, but uh, shipping and customs and duty are a lot. <laughs> I know that's so. Strong. It's 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 sometimes if I can't make it myself or if I I don't yeah. have the means to do it locally, um, I just no. But it looks clean it though. Work. It looks clean. To be honest, like I didn't Thank expect you. that. Yeah, it looks clean. I might just do that too. Does it come with a mm -hmm. sole on the bottom or no? Well, you can probably put a sole on uh, too, right? Yeah. Yeah, you can put a sole on that uh, manually. Mm. I have a different the mask actually was pretty good too. I've I've had some issues getting masks from Amazon, but the mask is actually pretty nice. Um, oh, you just nice. have to get a face shield if you don't have one. Oh, okay. Hmm. I was with the soles of the, like I can never get soles installed on my suits if I buy from Zentai Zone or anything because I'm just one size too big from the mm. last size that they do. So but it I, hurts though, man. The soles hurt. <laughs> I have it on. I have it on my Green Lantern one. It kills. Like when I'm walking, the my feet are like like hurting. It's pain. It's pain. I mean, yeah, it ridiculous. Oh, I mean, yeah, I'll get. I'll get into. I'll get into the music now. I have to separate. Is this going to be really hard for me to 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 pin down? Uh, your top five female Caribbean musicians. Gussie? Mia, man. Um, <laughs> shoot. It's not hard, but it's hard at the same time. Um, uh, Allison Hines, for sure. Um, uh, Patrice Roberts. Uh, Destra, for sure. Uh, Nyla Boxen. And um, Spice. I like Spice. I like her. Like her a lot. <laughs> <laughs> SJ. So I'm also a fan of Destra and those. Um, but I, I thought I would bring some Bahamian artists who may not be well known otherwise elsewhere. Um Bodine. Um hold on. let me write these down. Hold on, hold on. I want to test check them out. Yeah, how do you spell that? Bodine B O D I N E. Okay. So there's Bodine, there's Crazy Ringo, um, who is actually a cosplayer here as well. Um, there's Chase Fernander. Right now, all down. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Tanisha Sweeting. These are all Bahamian artists? All Bahamian artists. Hmm. Okay. And then uh, there was this Bahamian rock band that was operating a, a couple of years ago um, who had a female lead um, called Avant Garden. Hmm. So those are my picks. <laughs> well, I gotta check these out. I'm very open when it comes to music. I think a lot of Caribbean people are very open. Like, you'll go back home and like you'll see the the most toughest person that you walk. In. Like I did that when I went to Jamaica. I'm like. I saw like this big tough dude with like bandanas there. I walked in the car, these guys playing Cindy Lauper girls wanna have fun. I'm like, you know, every <laughs> That's all about yeah, bro. I'll tell you all bro, of I'll our parents yeah. all of our parents were really into like the eighties and nineties music, uh well eighties really and seventies music that like they I were exposed the king, to the all king, kinds the of king and queen, here. the king and queen of of of, of the Caribbean is like Michael Bolton and Celine Dion. Mm hmm Oh, I thought you guys were gonna do country. No, and no, Shade, no. a lot of like Shade, a lot of Shade. <laughs> BBI, what's your top five? I think that was hard because I think you wanted Soka. 
No, no, um, you can change name anybody. You're any Caribbean artist, female Caribbean, doesn't matter. Any. Riri. Free up. Free up. Free up. Go I like my Riri. I like my Nicki Minaj. Um, Destra. Des I think everybody loves Destra. Destra is queen. Alison Hines. Lady Saw. Um, Elaine. You know. You know. I want to know why Rihanna is ashamed to say she's half Guyanese, though. She's not ashamed. She's she not never ashamed. talks about it. She never hears she say that. She's not ashamed. She, big up, she bigs up Barbados all the time. Never hears it say I'm half Guyanese. Is that what she grew up, no? Well, <laughs> I guess. But technically, you are half Guyanese. Isn't her mom or mom, I mean, her mom is, right? Big up where you're from. She's from Barbados. Let her have it. Okay, I'll go with my See, I was gonna say <laughs> I was gonna say Riri and Nicki Minaj, but I just assumed that everybody else was going to. <laughs> so I was like, let me come with some different options. Also, I honestly I, didn't even think I about love, them. I honestly didn't I even love Lady Saw. Oi. Um uh Jay said that it, for the question that he posed that was posed earlier about the what building would you would build if you had all the money in the world. Um it, it was the big O. Who's the big O? It was an anime that was popular in the 90s. Um, it used to come on Toonami. I don't know if that's, that's different from um, regionally, but it was about a very big robot called the Big O. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Uh, and a Dominic yeah. Knight said that he would uh, he would build Goliath from gargoyles. Oh, shoot. Yes. You know who did that? Uh, Nightmare Mage 100. Nightmare Mage 100 did gargoyles. Uh, Goliath, and he did a. I don't know where I don't know where Nightmare where he comes up with these costumes, man. Like he pops them on like so like steadily, like, like frequently too. I'm like, oh, holy crap! I'm like, like it just amazes me. Yeah, it just amazes me every time too. I'm like, wow. Like that guy, like that's what I'm talking about. Like he should be one of the guys that should be getting a lot more recognition. Like, yeah, definitely, definitely. He does. Man, he does. He does. He uh, does classic retro. He does. You guys know what we're talking about uh, BVI and and, and Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. he's amazing. He's amazing. Yeah, stuff is amazing. Uh, other than that, yeah, no, that's it. That's all we got. Um, <laughs> Big O with Batman with a eight with a with a mech. With a mech. Yes, that's hmm. accurate. <laughs> Batman with a mech. All right, cool. All right. Check that. I didn't want to leave the the chat out because they're here watching too. So may as well get them their answers. Uh, my top five female. I don't really have a top five, to be honest. Wait, oh, I have it written down in my phone. Let me see, because I had to think. Uh, the problem is, like, my, my taste in music changes, like, every, pretty much every year. Mm -hmm. My artist changes, like, like depends on, on, the, on the, I don't know, because there was one time where I listened to a certain artist. Um, I had to throw a Soka person in there, because I, but I don't really listen to Soka, so. The only person I listen to is Destra. Uh, Cecile, Tanya Stevens, Lady Saw, Elaine, and Queen Africa. I don't know if you guys know who that is. Those are my six artists. Six. I put I put Tanya and Cecile. They're kind of they're they're technically the same kind of genre. What are you writing, Gussie? I'm just thanking Jazz for trying so hard. Oh, she's in the chat? Yeah, she's in the oh. chat. I just, I just wanted to thank her. For I know. Her. Sorry about that, Jazz. I wish you were here. Yeah, it's just, you know, she's been trying she's been trying to get back online and she just can't. So just like, oh, don't worry about it. Don't don't stress, you know? Oh. Yeah, it's Saturday. Saturday is not for stress. Saturday is for kick up. I was waiting. Who who was mentioning rum to me? Was it Shawshank? Shawshank for sure. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, have a bottle, I have a bottle here. I was waiting for him to come on so I could take a shot with him. Um, top five, top five male art. Gus, you're not drinking, are you? No, never. I've never drank in my life. I can't, I can't reinforce the guy in his stereotype, man, by myself. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I don't, don't drink. I don't know what to tell you. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. Your top five, your top five, uh, male Caribbean artists. Oh. Um, I know Marshall Montana's in there. Definitely. Did you not see my? You saw my, you saw my uh, Spotify playlist. Thing yeah, I saw it. Yeah, Marshall's like number one and all. You that. actually made. You're you're the reason I actually got Spotify. 
of room. <laughs> Because I, I download a lot of the music though. But Spotify the thing is Spotify doesn't have a lot of the music I actually like actually download too. Oh. Uh I think I put uh Marshall Montano, uh Guess the Band, uh Sparrow. Uh that's an old school one. Sparrow is one that plays Mighty, Mighty Sparrow? The Mighty Sparrow, yeah. My, my like on Sundays my dad plays that. It's like religion at that point. Um Shaw Marshall. Uh, problem child, um, and my, the, for my Dominican people, uh, WCK. And he, every year during Caravana, we get them to play at my boy's house, and it's a wild time. Mm-hmm. I think that's more than five, but whatever. No, no, I got, I got, I got way more than five. So you can, you're good. Yeah, you're good. You're good. Uh, just- okay. Okay, I can I can only introduce you all to one male Bahamian artist. Um, his name well, is Judah the Lion. Yeah. It sounds like a it sounds like a reggae artist. I might like him. Yeah, his name is Judah the Lion. He's incredible. Um, I actually went to school with him. Uh, he definitely check out his work. Um, but in terms of wider Caribbean, um, Maxi Priest. Which I, I don't know if he technically counts because he's a British, but he has roots mm-hmm. in Caribbean. Um, I would say he does. Yeah, Shabba Ranks. Uh, Shabba. You guys are going way back. You guys are going way back. I, I didn't even go back like that. Uh, you, These I, are what I grew up with. I don't I know what to say tell you. Shabba Ranks and not say Shabba. No, yeah. but like, I, I, I have a lot of old old people I could have pulled up. But I, I, I was trying to go to who's my top five right now that I'm listening to right so, now. My Gussie, funny forever. story. Funny story, Gussie. Uh, you might have seen a doggo in the background. Uh, his name is Shaba. <laughs> <laughs> and he was named after Shaba Ranks. So everyone says Shaba every time. I think, I think everyone, I think everybody in the Caribbean used to sing Tingalingaling back in, in, in elementary school, primary school. Correct. Mm-hmm. Every time the, the the bell would go, you would sing it. Uh, I, I think I think I, I, I think Mr. Loverman was my favorite. Uh, did you see? Did you see the Jim Carrey version to that? Yeah. <laughs> I'm living color, did it, bro. <laughs> That's not uh, right. That's go, not go on, SJ. How many you got so far? Shaba. Uh, I think that was Judo. three. Yeah. Ma- uh, Shaba, Michael Judo Montano is three. also. He's Montano is also big down here. Um, so I've heard a lot of his stuff and I like it. Um, I I really only have four. I'm so sorry. Oh, <laughs> Please don't come for me. It's not homeless. You're okay. Don't worry. It's not homeless. Okay. <laughs> you don't have to worry about it. Okay. Free up yourself. Free up. BVI. Marshall, you know. Um, Cass. Mr. Killer. I got to name some, some local people now, just like how SJ did. I love me some Rock City. Oh, my God. Um, vibe. And um, I'm going to say... I ask, I don't know where he is now, but I miss his music. So if he ever see this, come back to making music. <laughs> That's nice. That's nice. I can't I can't believe Jazz left me with you guys. Jazz, I'm upset. But Jazz is my only Jazz is the only one here who likes reggae like me. All you guys are your soca over here. Yo, I'm trying look, listen, I'm talking to Jazz right now. I'm trying to get it. SJ is the only one who got Maxi and Shabba on our list. I was just gonna say I didn't name any so before. Maxi oh, Priest. Damn. damn. So you guys me, I have how many people I got on my list? Let me see. Mr. Lover, man, they call me Mr. Lover. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people on my damn list. You, you can even oh, one direction. I, I you know how hard it took me to, to, to do this. This is like right now. People that I listen to right now. So okay, my number my number five. Let me check my phone. It's a different list on this phone. Burner Boy is, is, is Caribbean? I thought Caribbean. Yes. Is it? Yes, he, he was, is. Um, really? Where? Yeah. Yes. I thought he was. He African. is. Yeah, I thought he was African. Mm-mm, he is. I know. So uh, Jay said that on online on the chat. He said that it, uh, Burner Boy should have been mentioned. So where Where is Burner from anyway, Jay? I don't know where he's from. Don't know either. If I knew, I would tell you. Yeah, I didn't even know that to be honest with you. Okay, my top, my top, 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Top five condensed into. Okay, but well, the, the fifth spot is going to be Alkaline and Popcorn. Uh, the fourth spot is Bugle and Jamil. The third spot is going to be Mavado, DeMarco, and Idonia. Number two is Luton Fine, and my favorite artist of all time is Busy Signal. Busy. Yeah, Busy is my favorite. All right. I like Busy because he's very versatile, man. He brings he brings back that old school music too that my mom used to listen to. I don't know if I say that right. Oh wow. Okay. Uh so Miss Miss Jasmine gave us her list. All right. Jasmine Impress. She yeah, gave yeah, her um top five lady artists that she likes would be Lady Shaw, Lady G, Spice, Patra, Captain Lady Patra. And Patra? yeah, Patra, you know. Yeah, yeah. I've heard Patra do it so long. Uh Allison uh, is the last one. I think she has oh okay, 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 okay. Here, here, here. Her male artist, uh, let's see him. And then she had her male artist. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna say this right. I, I'll do it if you want me to. Uh, Adonia, Adonia, Beris, Beris Hammond, Content, Beris Hammond. Chronics, and Damian Marley. Funny right. story is like I I I I start I I don't know if you guys know Con you guys, I'm sure everybody knows Conscious by now. I actually yes. started speaking to Conscious when he first started first started his career. Oh really? Like, to, like when MSN Messenger was was a thing back then. This guy's aging used, himself. Yeah, when MSN Messenger was a thing back then, he used to send me like actual songs and stuff. I have like an exclusive song from him. Um, Play it now. Let me hear it. Well, it's a song I got from my boy he used to do like hip hop at the time. I was like the connection to get the collaboration done. Mm. Uh, it's on YouTube. I'll send it to you. See? All right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let me see what she's saying. She's saying something. Oh, are you? Which, which video? Uh, she said she's in one of Conscience's videos. Jaysto says uh, Burning Boy is actually Nigerian, yeah, but he's he's categorized as a reggae artist. Thank you. Oh, yeah. mm. How do you guys feel? Question. That's a question I'll ask, like in terms of music. How do you guys feel? Because I see there's a lot of uh, controversy with, um, uh, what's, what's it called? What's what's the genre called that Burner does? Afrobeat. Sorry, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of controversy between the like reggae, dancehall, soca, and stuff with Afrobeats, like and that is taking over in popularity wise. What do you guys think about that in terms of like Caribbean culture? Am I allowed to swear on this? It's great. It's awesome. I love it. The more the more uh, we spread out around the world, the more I love it. Our music is fantastic. All our music is fantastic. Every I see a lot of I see a lot of them, like especially dance hall artists like being upset about about it. Why? They should be they should be celebrating. It should be a I don't I, I don't understand. I feel like it's blowing up a little bit more and I, and I don't know if it's because of I guess the, the mainstream dance hall at this time is more I, I should say I guess not family friendly, I should say. So I feel like it's not it's, it doesn't have the reach as Afro beats at this time. I don't know. Do you like I like like there's, there's reggae artists that are putting out some family family friendly music. Yeah. Um they sh like reggae has is is still prev is still has a presence in music for sure because during the 90s and the 2000s they held it down. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Enough that even career like even Soka is getting up there now, but Soka's taking its time, like it's it's a long time for it to go. But Afrobeats is something that we should all be celebrating because it's from it's from the motherland. Uh, for me, anyway, uh, it's from the motherland. I I don't care where it's from. It has a good beat. It has a good message. It has it has people who are being celebrated. It's my people being celebrated. So I don't see a problem if they're like if there's a jealousy thing that they need to. Come together and be like, you know what? Maybe I'll do a, a collaboration with, let's say, Burner Boy and somebody else. They should mm -hmm. be working together to make more money. You know? Agree. I agree. Yeah. What about y'all? Sorry, over there for a second. 
I agree with you 100%. I don't see yeah, Gussie, like Gussie, 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 any kind of... Gussie's my unofficial DJ, by the way, guys. You guys didn't know that. Oh. I don't... Yeah, he, was at, he, was not... our, he was at our booth uh, last year at Fan Expo. Mixing it up. Don't listen to this guy. <laughs> I'm not a DJ. I'm not a DJ. All right? <laughs> Listen, if anybody sees me do what I did at Fan Expo and is a DJ, they'd slap me in the face. No, I am not a DJ. I'm just a guy who likes to play music. Okay, I'll give you guys the final question before we go. Um, do you guys feel that there's enough Caribbean representation in the cosplay community? If no, no what can we do to uh, change that? Slay, Slay, take that one because you, you got an answer. <coughs> No, I don't feel that there is enough um, to, to the point where like there were, I, I don't, I did not know BVI Mermaid or Empress um, Jasmine until this panel. And I feel like that's a crying <coughs> shame because mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> it would have been amazing to have known prior to this about them. Um, I, I feel like we find each other by accident when really, if the algorithm works the way it's, it's, it's supposed to, we should have been yeah. the ones gravitating towards each other a long time ago. Um, I feel, I, I do feel like it, it actively works against those of us who actually live in Caribbean islands, especially those of darker skin color. So there's that, that's my answer there. Do you feel there's a lot of colorism as well? Because I know personally, I dealt with a lot of colorism growing up. So I don't know, do you guys feel that in the community? Cosmic community in the Caribbean, there's a lot of colorism. I feel I like BVI might be able not for to be me. No, me. not for like me. I, like I feel the shades of 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 like Gussie. Like for example, like like being being a light skinned brother, being being dark. Like you'll be treated differently in the, your own community. Oh, like like I personally got treated different shape like in my community because I'm I'm darker. I, like I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you. Like it is, it is what it is. Like I understand what happens sometimes. Like people invite me to groups, and they're just like, "Yeah, you're. Can you be the black guy in our group? Like the one black guy? Like I get it, because they want it to be like authentic. But like I have no desire to be the black guy mm -hmm. that's there. Do you understand what I'm saying? So. Like for me, I those that's the kind of colorism I I get. Like where it's just like, yeah, you're a dark guy, you could be the black guy that's in this show. Just yeah, yeah. Make the costume. Like unfortunate. Yeah, it's. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think that I don't think colorism is really prevalent in in cosplay. You might get more racism and and things like that, but in terms of color, I don't think really think it's that prevalent. I mean. Like the light skin, I'm like, I can't speak for the light skin people, but I don't think they go through the, the same thing where they're just like, like they can like I, I guess they get the best of both worlds. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna assume that, and if I'm wrong, somebody, put your hand up and tell me. I'm just gonna assume like they don't have to deal with somebody telling them to cosplay this person because they're light skin or something like that. It's like, he could he, like let's say, the light skin person, like be the white guy in the show and no one will say to him you can't do that because you're black they'll be like oh cool you just tan. like you know what i'm saying like yeah that's what i feel like i don't think it's more prevalent i think the darker your skin tone maybe you might see it more but like i don't think there's a hatred or like a, a place where they go where people are just going to be like oh this guy's light skin we don't want him in our so do you feel there's a lot of um, uh, adequate representation in, the, in cosplay from the Caribbean community? No. I feel like, especially on, especially on Instagram, like I like I get like excited when I see someone's flag. Because that's the only way I can tell, like if you're from the Caribbean, I'm like, when I saw like BVI's flag, I'm like, oh shit. I messaged her right away, I'm like, oh, you're from, you know what I mean? I'm like, I get excited when I see people that are from the Caribbean as well. So I'm like, it, it's a nice thing. But, it, but it's because we're so like, Multicultural in the Caribbean, you can't tell just by looking, right? Like I, um, like, my, my thing about that though is that even really talking about Caribbean, and I look at 
certain individuals um, who do certain things and they say, oh, you're from the Caribbean, especially on TikTok. And I don't look at the flags. I look at every single flag they actually put. And I don't see BBI. And I'm like, I will see Jamaica. I will see St. Lucia. I will see St. Vincent. I will see every single Caribbean island except British Virgin Islands. And I'll be like, I'll even see St. Thomas, the US Virgin Islands. I'm like, so am I not from the Caribbean? So I understand in that kind of way. It kind of makes it feel as if I'm not part of the Caribbean community for some odd reason, or maybe that it's all in the name. Well, people people get very technical online, man. People get technical, especially as I said, with especially for us, we're in South America, we're just passed by. So I, I get technical too. I'm like, I'm like technically Trinidad's not in the Caribbean as well, if you want to speak. Like they're not in the Caribbean Sea as well. So like we I get I go to arguments all the time, man. You can't like, be like we shouldn't, we shouldn't be that way though. It shouldn't be that way. I don't know why why it's like that. We shouldn't be fighting a most one. But I get excited when I actually do see representation of people actually put um put my country as part of the Caribbean. I think I think you shared it even in the group because I saw it, this um RJ, I think his name is, and he did superheroes of the Caribbean. I was so happy and excited when yeah. I saw BBI version. I'm like, I'm gonna do this. I was like, Yeah, yeah those yeah, those are sick, yeah. Joseph, the guy, one of the artists that does superhero of the world, is one of my friends here in, in Toronto. He's a, he's a really good guy. You, you should get in touch with him. See if he can make you like a little poster for yourself, if you want. Okay. There was there was a booth at Fan Expo like a while back of these artists who were making like Caribbean countries, like the, the superheroes yeah, based on those, the country you're from. Those are, those are the guys yeah. I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I, I saw. Uh, is it the same person you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? I'll send it on the group chat. I'll send it on the group chat so you could go check it out. And if I could make a, if I could make a like an armored guy in a costume, that'd be sick. <laughs> that would be sick. Yeah. We could all show up together at um SJ's con. Yo, SJ, <laughs> SJ, if it's December, I'm I'm down. I don't want to. I want to be here during the snow. Let me just be real. <laughs> don't want to be here. During the snow. Send me a flight. I'll be there. I mean, you don't have any money, but we'll find a way. We, we, we have third world problems. We're broke. <laughs> but yes. but I will send you the information. Send me the information. I will be there because it's better than being here when the snow is at like two feet and you're just like, you know, listen, I wasn't made for this. I was yeah. made for sunshine. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> So what it's funny do? you what? mentioned oh, that uh, Trinidad isn't part of the Caribbean because I've heard all my life that neither is the Bahamas, but we, we technically, you know, Woo! like we're part of the West. Per personally, the personally, country. personally, it doesn't bother me at all. But when someone's going to attack you and say, well, Guyana's not part of the Caribbean, like, I don't care. Like a lot of Guyanese people get offended when, when they're told you're not West Indies or you're not Caribbean. I'm like, I know I, I, I embrace being South American. There's nothing wrong with being South American, right? I see it that way. I'm like. I'm South American with Caribbean, you know, culture, whatever heritage, whatever you want to call it, but it doesn't offend me. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I would be offended. No, I'm, I not, think I'm, it, not, a, I'm not offended. I think it's different no. sometimes because, like, there's also that, that whole side of, like, a lot of times I have to prove that I'm Bahamian because people just assume that, you know, I'm from the States because light. <laughs> I see that. I can see how that would happen. Is that a form of colorism for you? Is it? Is that a form of colorism? Well, well, yeah, yeah, I mean, I that's so. that's kind of that's kind of like a, a very <laughs> touchy line mm -hmm. because like there's still a lot of privilege that comes with that. Um, even though technically here, like I would be a minority, it's still like not nearly on the same level as being a minority in the states. Um, if anything, I, I feel like that made me a lot more self-aware um and on the side of like equity and being very inclusive towards people who don't look like me because i'm used to being the only white person in the room mm. it's like a reverse world dusty 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 pinpointed out he's got it on the nose there but yeah that's not exactly what i'm saying to you like i see people like maybe could be like of the same race as me but Maybe a little lighter tone, they'll get more opportunities than you would get. You know what I mean? And, and I've seen that happen. So, well, well, in the cosplay community, it happens all the time. So, you know. it, that's just pretty much how it is in, in in every aspect of life. Yeah. When you go to interview for a job, it's it's pretty much like that. I'm not saying they can, just, they can look at your name and just say, "I don't want this person," right? 
But <laughs> I haven't even seen it. Yeah. So you're wrong because my name is the whitest name ever. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> but trust me, when they see my name on the resume, they assume that I'm Greek. So. <laughs> Exactly. You want to you tell us what it is? I'm not going to tell you what my name is. No. No. It's Gus. So Gus. Gus. It's a Greek name. So they just go, all right, whatever. He must be Greek. And then they, I show up and they're like, that can't be possible. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That's the Canadian to me. Sorry. <laughs> are, are you guys ever planning to, to travel outside of your countries to go to a con like i have in the near future like upcoming yeah um a few of my friends and i are going to blurred con in july um the chameleon oh, coalition yeah. are you cbi you as well yeah yeah <laughs> yeah. So awesome. yeah oh i didn't get tickets like <laughs> how did you guys get to i i like how did you my internet didn't let me get tickets for BlurredCon. I mean, BlurredCon is the one that I wanted to go to this year for sure. So I, I think I might have to like steal a ticket from somebody. If you guys are going to be there. I don't think they're sold out yet. Oh, they're no? not sold out. You can still get it. Oh, yeah. Let me get on that right now. Forget you. Oh, where, where is, where is BlurredCon? Of Virginia. In Virginia. Or DC. Yeah. Crystal, it's, it's Crystal like, City? Yeah. It's like five minutes away from the DC airport, but it's technically in Virginia. I don't understand well, US geography. <laughs> uh, I'm hoping you guys can get, get to actually meet one another. Yeah, that would be amazing. And that's what I'm here for, to bring everyone together, you know? <laughs> Trust me, I'm going to blur time, bro. But uh, I'm also trying to take some of my fellow Bahamian cosplayers with me to Alias Entertainment Expo in Trinidad, um, what Pantorona usually runs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, I need to get out more, man. You should come with me. It's only 200 for, bucks. For a ticket? <laughs> yeah, it's not bad. Are you looking at hotel and everything? Uh, no. I will. Just for a ticket alone? Two bills? Yeah, man. I mean, How much is a ticket for um for Dragon Con? Like 100, 120. Mm, okay. It's not bad. And you get for six days of entertainment. Oh, full weekend patch. Here we go. All right. I'm on it. I'll see you guys down there. Oh, the full weekend badge is seventy dollars. I'm sorry, that was the VIP one. We oh, telling me two hundred dollars, Gussie. Yeah, because I I was like, you've got to be looking at the VIP one because it's I, not it's not nearly that expensive. All I ever do is VIP experiences. Okay. I think the most difficult part is finding um, the hotel accommodation that's kind of close to the convention. Yeah, I think the the hotel that a convention is at is already sold out. We'll make this happen. It's gonna happen. Oh, I think there's it. still space at the Renaissance and the um. There's another one that's relatively close by, like right across the street. Um, I think there might still be spaces there, from what I saw last. But those are probably gonna fill up really quick. We should all just pitch in on um. Uh, what's that? What's that thing called? They use now. Oh shit. I forgot what it's called now. You can like get a whole house or whatever. Airbnb. Airbnb. Yeah, there you go. You're welcome. I see a lot of people doing that. Yeah, it's good. Just These days, it's just as expensive as staying in a hotel, though. That's even, if you, even if you split the cost. Yeah. Oh really? Hmm. Let me wait for Gussie. I don't know what Gussie's doing. He's buying his tickets right now. Yeah. <laughs> That's my word. When I say I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna do it. Like, <laughs> no, it's not transferable. Continue. Done. I am on my way to BlurCon. I don't have accommodation, <laughs> but I'll be there. <laughs> my seven. Boom. Chase. I'm official. I'm on it. Thank you. Thank you, ladies, for telling me because I thought it was done. I was like, oh, first back. <laughs> I even got a confirmation already. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was quick. All right, I'm in. <laughs> Thank you for this call. I'm so happy I was part of this. Thank awesome. you. So much. Thank you. I was just 
I have a big ass grid on my face like an ass. <laughs> I, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. Chris is probably going to be going and, and uh, Swaggy as well. I got to talk to them and see. Yeah, Swaggy's always there. Does he talking? I can't hear him. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I was just saying I'm going to be there for sure. Uh, okay. Hmm. All right. So we'll end off. We'll end the the, the chat, and I want to thank you guys for coming as well. So, hey, so represent much. the Caribbean. Even though there's only four of us here, I, I don't know where everyone else went. They'll probably show up at uh, nine o'clock. Yeah, yeah. I think. Yeah, I should have told him that it's like five p.m. or something. Yeah, you're right. That's what. Yeah, next time, next time. I right, lesson learned. Lesson learned. Um, <laughs> uh, going. I'll give you guys this moment to plug whatever you guys want to plug. You know, your socials, whatever you guys want to do. And SJ, you can promote your con you have coming up as well. So, Gussie, take it away. Oh me? Oh, sure. Um, uh, you can find me at Gussie J at Twitter at Instagram at whatever social media, Gussie J, the same way it's spelled on the screen. Um, you can also tune into our our podcast at the Blurred Society. Uh, me and a bunch of guys just talk a whole bunch of nonsense about life and comic books and movies, and that's at the Blurred Society at Instagram, at Twitter, at on stream or t- uh, Twitch as well. So, Blur Society, look us up. We're there. We're foolish. Sorry, I just wanted to write that down. Uh, so, I'm pretty much everywhere, SJ Slays or SJ Slays Cosplay. Um, I also am the founder of 242 Cosplayer Nation, which is the behaving cosplay community. So, you can follow 242 Cosplayer Nation anywhere. Um, Generally, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Uh, there's GomCon coming up, which we're hoping to have, I believe, literally New Year's weekend. Um, How do you spell that? I say sorry. GomCon. G O M. Yeah, C O N. C O N. Um, we don't have a page dedicated to it yet, but we're operating out of our smaller con's name called the Geek Out Two Four Two. Okay. I'm Justin, also. Make this happen. Yes, hopefully it would be amazing to have you all down. Um, I'm also part of the Chameleon Coalition, which is a global alliance of cosplayers we're trying to build up. Um, it's actually designed so that, like, if you are going to a con alone, you can kind of find someone in the coalition to go with you because going to a con alone is a very oh. overwhelming experience. And, you know, uh, hotel rooms and Airbnbs are expensive, so splitting costs is often preferred. Um, it's, it's funny that you said that. I had the idea to, to well, I guess I'll put it out there because I don't have the uh, resources to build it, but I had the idea to to create an app, something like that. You know how there's apps where you can meet people just randomly? Really? I, wanted to create a, I, I, want, I wanted to create an app for, like, conventions like that because, like, say you're going at Spider-Man, like, you don't have anyone to go with. You can go on the app and find like a group of cosplayers that are going and you know and be part of that group. Like I something like that is a good idea that you actually you said. Yeah, that's that was basically the idea behind it. It's just we don't we don't have money for an app right now. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, well, that's, yeah, you guys should definitely be patent that and put it out. <laughs> yeah, those those are my plugs. BBI. Um, you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok. All under the same name, BVA underscore mermaid. Yeah, you can find me there. Um, yeah, pretty much it. <laughs> yeah, I gotta add you guys on Facebook. I think that Facebook's a little more personal too. This Instagram gets a little insane Best. at times. Yeah, it definitely gets a little insane at times. So mm-hmm. I'll add you guys on Facebook. BVA mermaid, what, what's your next con again? Is it BlurCon or? BlurCon will be my next con, and then I'm going to Anime NYC oh, with my fellow Kara gamers. I'm going to miss you. Okay, so I'm going to miss you at uh, – I, I go to New York Comic Con because it's a long weekend for us here in Canada, so mm-hmm. I go there. Uh, so I'm going to oh. miss you for that one. I don't go to the second oh. 
I don't know. Okay. Well, well, I've well, only been to two conventions so far since starting this whole thing. So I was supposed to go to Puerto Rico Comic Con, but then the pandemic happened. Oh. So, um, and then I was looking at their convention just to see what it is that they're doing. And it's not capturing me. So I was like, okay, let me go stateside. Okay. Well, if you guys ever come down to Fan Expo Toronto, just let us know as well. Yeah, I'll put you up. No problem. I was supposed to be going there um, when the pandemic hit. I literally had tickets and everything. And then COVID hit the Bahamas and I was like, well, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you can always come again. So hopefully. I would, yeah, we would love that to have you guys down here. Just hit us up if you guys come. What's Gussie doing? Gussie's smiling by himself over there. <laughs> I'm going to turn off my camera. Right <laughs> All right, guys. So I want to thank you guys for coming. Anything else you guys want to say before we go? Anything? Thank okay. you for uh, having us. One last thing. Any advice for Caribbean cosplayers? Maybe some kids that want to cosplay that might not, you know, be comfortable doing so, especially growing up in the Caribbean. Would you, any advice for them? Do it. Just do it. Who cares what anybody says? Just do it. If it makes you happy, do it. It's fine. I agree. Yeah. Just do it. Start small because um, I know that a lot of cosplays can be very expensive. Also, a very important thing is don't compare yourself to other individuals. Don't think that your outfit that you've dedicated your time and energy or your money on is not as good as the next person who might be doing almost the same cosplay as you. Just be confident mm -hmm. in what you did, your memories, your your ability, and you should be fine. Yeah. Also, don't let the noise in the market uh, discourage you from doing anything you want to do. You can cosplay whoever you want to cosplay, regardless of your race, sex, uh, height, weight, anything. Like, Do not allow these people with no profile picture to tell you you can't do what you want to do. Or be good at it. Preach, yeah. Preach. And those are always the people that that say something. Yeah, it's, yeah, that's exactly true. Exactly true. I don't, I don't, I don't. We don't really get that a lot from people within the cosplay community because I think there's an unwritten code and everyone kind of knows cosplay is for everyone, right? So it's more people that are outside. So if, if people are, if they don't have a profile picture, and my thing is, well, if you don't like what I'm wearing, go make one yourself, right? So I mean, let me see what you can do. It, it, it's not. It's not that difficult. Or people who are like, oh, you should have done it this way. Okay, well, yeah. cash up me the money, and I will do it the way that you want me to. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. do, it, do it because you like doing it, and you enjoy doing it. That's the main thing. And that's do it because you enjoy doing it. That cash app line, trust me, that's the fastest way to shut up a hater. Because the moment you say that, the moment they just disappear, they, they unfollow you. It's like, send mm -hmm. me the money. And then you're just like, yo, I don't need to take this. <laughs> I'm out. It. Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you so much for coming and joining us. This is my first time actually doing it. I'm, I was nervous at first, but I'm, I'm good now. Okay. Thank you guys. I for was coming. nervous as well. Oh yeah, I have, was, like, was... I have like I have I have like severe anxiety like issues. So like me hosting this is like a problem. So like I was like, oh shit, I have to do it. <laughs> so thank you guys all for coming and making me feel comfortable as well. So hey, anytime you need me, anytime you need me, I'm here. You know Thank you guys. Uh, and I'm going to follow you guys on yeah. Facebook as well. So hopefully we get to see each other soon. Okay. Well, hopefully, Thank you. everyone. Peace Thank out. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>